Do you have suspicions that your processor is not performing to its optimal levels or what you expect that it should? Well, there's a chance that your computer is thermal throttling, but you need a good way to check it. And we're gonna talk about that in this video. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Recently, we upgraded our editing computer with the brand newest Intel 13700K processor, which is a powerhouse. However, I am thinking that I might be thermal throttling, which I want to do some diagnostics and I thought that this might be a good time to show you how to check if your computer is thermal throttling and just to validate. Now today we are not going to show you how to fix thermal throttling specifically, but we will talk about how to test if you're thermal throttling and know for sure if you need to do any of the solutions that we can talk about in this video. Now there's two things to know when we're talking about thermal throttling. Number one is that there is a difference, a very distinct difference between CPU throttling and thermal throttling. So I'm gonna talk about what CPU throttling is. Later on, we will go to the station back here and we will test if we are CPU throttling or thermal throttling, but we need to understand what the difference is because very, very often, People confuse the two and they think that if your computer is not meeting the performance expectations that you have, that it is always thermal throttling. And that is not actually true. So to start off with, CPU throttling refers to a technology called dynamic frequency scaling. That's where the processor limits its power draw to match the performance needed for the specific task that you're doing. So for example, this computer is an editing powerhouse. I use it for Premiere Pro, I use it for Photoshop, and I use it for everything that you see to make videos like this. So at times, it will need a lot of power to be able to do the jobs that it is required to do. But the rest of the time, when I'm just researching information or when I'm putting together a script for the next video, or I'm just checking on the stats and analytics, you don't need the same amount of power as what you have when you're editing or exporting a video. So the processor actually will limit its amount of power that it uses and throttle that CPU down to match the performance that's required. And in a newsflash, browsing the internet, watching YouTube, checking your email, that doesn't really need a lot of power. So even though this processor can go way over five gigahertz, it doesn't need five gigahertz to do those basic functions. Consider a Ferrari driving and stop and go traffic. The Ferrari doesn't need 800 horsepower when you're just going light to light and stop and go traffic. You're gonna use maybe 50 horsepower out of the 800. But sometimes when you find yourself on a drag strip, you will use all 800 horsepower at that time. Your CPU is doing the exact same thing. So it just needs one gigahertz of power or performance to complete those menial tasks. So there's no point in having the extra heat that's generated from the extra performance when it's not needed. So that would be CPU throttling. It is a very specific function that all modern computers have, and you can control it a little bit to tell it what kind of profile to match, but know that a computer will do that. That is different from thermal throttling. Thermal throttling is where the processor gets so hot that if it were to continue at the performance level that it's at, it would actually overheat and eventually shut the system down. Now, most people don't like it when your system crashes, so they've built in safeguards so that when it hits a certain temperature, it will start to clock the speed or lower the performance of the chip until the heat can be managed at a safe level. That is thermal throttling. Now that is what I believe that this computer is doing and I'm going to do some tests to show you how to check what that is in a minute. But now that we understand the difference between the two, we need to figure out 
how do I actually test for the two? How do I prove if I am CPU throttling or if I'm thermal throttling? So we're gonna go to the workstation now and we're gonna check that out next. Now we're at the computer, it is time to actually run some software tests and run some monitors. So you're gonna ask, what are the monitors that we're gonna use? The first one we're gonna use is this guy right here. It's called CPU ID HW monitor. It stands for hardware monitor. If you don't have that installed, it's simple. All you're gonna do is open up Google and you're gonna go CPU ID H wear monitor. It will be right here and you can just go and download that. I just clicked on set up English and ran it and installed it. Once it is installed and opened, you will see it open up just like this here and it gives you access to everything that you might wanna see. Now there's more than what I wanna see here. So now it's gonna start expanded out. So it's gonna show you everything. So you're gonna be able to see all of your main board stats. You're gonna see temperatures on your main board. In this case, I strictly want to watch the temperature of my processor, okay? So I've pulled out my processor here. I have the Intel Core i7-13700K. Whatever your processor is, it should show up right there. I also, have the clocks expanded out so that I can see what the min and max clock speeds are and everything else is minimized. You can see I've got a lot of hard drives. You can also see I do have my GPU, but this is not a GPU heat test. This is a processor heat test. So I'm gonna minimize all of that just so that I only see the stats that I want to see. So that will be the first bit of software that we're gonna use for this test. The other test that you want to pull up is your resource monitor. And the easiest way to do that is press the Windows key and the R button, you're gonna get this little run command that opens up and you're going to type in exactly what you see here, perfmon.exe space backslash res. When you click OK, that will pull up this. Now pull this over here onto the screen. That will pull up this resource monitor. Now there's a few key things that you want to watch for when you're looking at this monitor. This is gonna be important for deciding if it is CPU throttling or thermal throttling. In this case, we're just gonna be on the overview. You can see we have the CPU usage and the maximum frequency. Now, can I reset? Now, a couple useful things that you're gonna notice on here, we can see our overall CPU usage. So currently we're at about 4% CPU usage. We have a maximum frequency of 137%, which we're not gonna to pay too much attention to that right now. You On this graph over here, you can see what our CPU usage is. It's quite low. Right now, I do have some things running in the background. Specifically, you'll see I have OBS running. That's recording this screenshot. So it uses a certain amount of processor power. If I wanted to, I could scroll down and see the average CPU usage across all of these softwares, but I don't really care about that. What I'm gonna do is slide this over to my other screen here, just so that I can have everything up all at once. So I've got everything up on my other screen at a glance where I can see it. Now, if you don't have two monitors, it's no big deal. You can run this in the background and then pull it up and see the stats after. That's, that's perfectly okay. So what we wanna do is just basically some light computer usage, just to see what our basic computer usage, because I know you're gonna be asking me, well, how do I know what my basic usage is? So you can see I've just opened up YouTube and I already see a blip over here on CPU usage. I'm still only at 4% average because I'm not really clicking stuff. Stuff. But as I click things and go through, I'm just gonna click through my YouTube channel. You can see small little blips on the screen where the usage goes up. It's currently at, it was at 9%, now it's dropping back down to 4%. So you can see what I was talking about where we don't need that much power to do what you're doing. It is very unlikely that your computer is thermal throttling at this point. So now what we wanna do is stress this out a little bit more so that we can see what's actually happening. So to do that, I'm gonna close this browser and I have a folder here of some softwares that I have installed that I'm just gonna run. Now, you want to make sure that it is a CPU intensive test and not a GPU test because we are not testing GPU throttling today. We're testing CPU throttling. So one that's a really good one to run is this Corona 1.3 benchmark. That is a processor benchmark tester. So you can download that again from Google. So I'll just go to Google and I type Corona test 
well, we'll type processor test because we don't want a thing. And then that'll take you to Corona Renderer and you just click on the benchmark test and then download Windows or download Mac, whichever one it is that you're looking for. Now I've already downloaded it and installed it. So what I'm gonna do now, I want to look at a few things before I run the test. So specifically on CPU ID, the hardware monitor, I'm gonna look at the Intel Core i7 package and the power cores and your efficiency cores. Now our current temperature is 52 degrees on the power cores, 53 degrees, or sorry, 48 degrees, it bounces around. So our maximum temperature is 76 degrees on the power cores, 57 on the efficiency cores, and then the overall package, 68 degrees. Now watch what happens when I run the Corona test. So it's gonna give me a halt to say, do you wanna allow this? Yes, I do. So now the Corona benchmark is booting up and it's about to run. So now it's gonna do a test based on just the processor and immediately we see that our total core is at a hundred degrees Celsius if we look over here we can see that our hardware monitor is at 144% CPU usage and 142% maximum frequency. So right off the bat, I know that I am not CPU throttling. And the reason I know that is because we are at over 100% processor utilization, which is good. That means that the processor is able to run up to above its maximum. If we were CPU throttling, I would expect to see this number below 100%. 144 is actually really good. The reason why I can hit that is because on the motherboard, there's settings to allow it to overclock on its own with like a boost function. And that's what you're seeing here is it's doing that boost function. The thing that we are more interested in is over here where our power cores are at 100 degrees and 100 degrees is the trigger point to start throttling. So I would expect better performance if I was not throttling. Now our test results are in, and you can see right here, it will tell us what those results are. So according to this, it did 16 passes. So it did this render 16 times using variations of power cores and efficiency cores. And it reports what our processor is, real-time CPU frequency, 4.9 gigahertz. Now this processor is supposed to boost up to 5.3 gigahertz. So I know that I am not boosting to the actual processor supported maximum. I should expect to see that closer to 5.3. But because my temperature was at 100 degrees, the computer stopped me from going at a higher clock speed. So this is where I know that the solution to my problem is upgrading my cooling or validating that my cooling is working properly. We will talk about that at the end of this video about how to check and maybe upgrade your cooling. Let's pretend that my processor was not hitting full capacity. It was not going to 100% because that could be a result that you're going to see. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to close that. What I would want to do is check that my settings in the computer are correct. So I'm going to do that by going to my start menu. I'm going to go to my settings right here. Then I'm going to go to system over here. Then I'm going to go to power and sleep. And then I'm going to click additional power settings. That will pull up my power options. I'm going to close this in the background so you guys don't have to worry about that. Now my power options are currently set to ultimate performance. Now I've done a different video showing you how to unlock the ultimate performance option, but you probably won't have ultimate performance as an option on your computer unless you've unlocked that specifically. But you should at least see high performance and you will probably also see power saver and you'll see balanced. Now most people are set to balanced. And if we open up the plan settings on balanced and we go to change advanced power settings, something that you're going to see is right here, processor power management. And in here you'll see minimum processor state setting 5%. So this relates, and I know there's a lot of jumping back and forth. This relates to this right here, the resource monitor. So we said that when we're in low load, we will let you run as low as 5%. Now, currently it says I'm running at three or 4%. So that's about as low as what this processor is supposed to be able to run based on the settings right here. Now, the other thing that we can look at is system cooling policy. 
You wanna make sure it's active. If you're looking for performance, it needs to be active. If it is in passive state, this is a huge, huge drawback. Passive state means that you would prefer for the processor to downclock itself rather than turning the fan speed up to increase cooling. So you want it to be very quiet. A quiet computer is a slow computer. A loud computer is a pretty fast computer. You definitely, definitely, definitely wanna make sure that, that is set to active. Now you will also see maximum processor state. Now in this setting, I have it to 100, but for fun, let's lower this to 50, okay? And I'm gonna apply those settings. So now I am in a state where I will not allow my processor to go over 50%. Now watch what happens when I run this same test again. I'm gonna run that Corona test, um, actually, and I'm gonna quickly clear min max. Now watch what happens. I told it that the most processor I want you to have is 50%, and look at this. Over here, our maximum frequency is 45%. You can see the dip here where I told it, don't go any higher than that, so boom. Immediately, I'm cutting my performance in half just from a setting on the computer. If you look at my thermals, my thermals are amazing. I'm at 65 degrees, 55 for the whole package current. My max was 65. I'm not hitting any thermal issues at all right now. My performance is bad, and we're gonna find that out when we uh, get the results of this test. But right now, I am running this computer very cool. I'm running it lower clock, and I'm not extracting anywhere near the full power from this computer, simply from a setting in my Windows settings. Finally, this render is complete. It took painstakingly long, but if we check the stats on here, so this will tell us right here, same processor, the real CPU frequency in this case was only 1.4 gigahertz. So it severely clocked it down, which meant that it takes significantly longer to render. This one was 11 minutes and 13 seconds. It was painful to sit and watch it knowing that I could just turn that setting up and gain a much, much faster render at a better performance setting. And then overall, you can see over here on our hardware monitor, our results are really good. So you can see our maximum temperature for the entire processor was 65 degrees. We never hit a thermal limit. So now hopefully you can better understand the difference between CPU throttling and thermal throttling. So in the first example, we definitely thermal throttled. In the second example, we definitely were CPU throttling. So I'm gonna go and set that back to what it was because I do not want to have this problem again. And I'm gonna put this back to ultimate performance and I'm gonna just double check the plan settings. Ultimate performance does some stuff in the background, but this sets minimum processor state at 100. Maybe I will turn that down. Dynamically adjust, system cooling is active, maximum processor state. Now you can't turn this up higher. 100 is the maximum, so it'll only allow up to 100, but I'm gonna hit apply on that and go like that. And now we are back to ultimate performance mode. So now you've seen how to adjust your CPU throttling setting, but it's time to talk about how to handle thermal throttling. So we're gonna go back over there and we're gonna talk about thermal throttling. So the first thing would be on your computer, you can adjust your performance expectations, which I've already shown you in this video. The other thing is about the heat. How can you manage the heat? So we've decided we are not CPU throttling. We are definitely thermal throttling. So there's a number of things that you're gonna wanna check to see if everything's functioning properly and then if perhaps an upgrade is in order for you. So number one is airflow. Your computer needs airflow. And a general rule of thumb is that we create airflow by using fans. Now, it's no secret that we're gonna use fans, but the question you're gonna have is how many fans should run on intake and how many should run on exhaust? So. Most basic systems, and, and this one probably counts as a basic system, all of my fans are currently set to be exhaust fans. Now I do have intake ports on the computer, so if you create 
negative airflow, which is what we're doing, then the cool air will get sucked in through whatever openings you have in the case where there isn't a fan. The air will go over all of your components and then get blown out of the computer through that exhausting fan. Sometimes people will throw fans on those intakes as a suction fan to help bring the air in. A general rule of thumb is you want more exhaust fans than intake fans. And the reason for that is quite simple. If you have too many intake fans, it will suck more air in than what the computer can blow out. That will create concerns with dust and accumulation inside the PC. So if you have negative air pressure, that means you have more fans blowing out than blowing in, the dust doesn't have a chance to settle because the air that comes in is immediately blown back out. That is why you would want negative air pressure in your PC. So if you only have a couple fans, make sure that they are exhausting your air and then only the cool air is getting pulled in naturally or with one fan, always less fans than your exhaust. Now we can talk about airflow. You know, one really big fan will move more air than a bunch of small fans. So you should be mindful of the fact that if you have the airflow ratings for your fans that you are actually making it so that your airflow rating for your intake is less than your airflow rating for your exhaust. Something else that will cause really poor heat management would be an incorrectly mounted heat sink on your CPU. So you want to use some good thermal paste. So you want to use some good thermal paste when you're installing your CPU. Also, it's not a bad idea to replace the thermal paste. If the processor has been there for at least a couple years, it might be a good idea to pull it off, clean it off, have a look around and apply some new thermal paste. Something like this is only about $10 on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. There's lots of different brands. There's lots of different components. There's ones that claim they're better than the other, but new thermal paste is always going to be better than old crusty thermal paste, even if it's cheap thermal paste. So that can go a long way. Also, if you're talking about water cooling, or all-in-one water coolers, there's a few things to keep in mind with that. Number one, you may have a pump that's wearing out, so it's not running as efficiently as it used to. You also may have had some evaporation within that water cooling system. So you might need to top it up if it's serviceable, or you might need to modify it so that it can be serviceable if it is not, or you may need to upgrade to a new all-in-one cooler. But the first place to start would be to clean it out. Open up your computer, get a can of compressed air, which I'll put a link in the description to some compressed air, and just shut the computer off, blow everything out. Now, keep in mind that if your computer is in a station like this, you're gonna blow dust everywhere in the air. It would be better to shut it all down, unplug everything, take it outside and blow it off out there because then at least the dust is outside rather than sitting on your desk behind your computer where it'll just get sucked back in again. But definitely a clean computer is a happy, cool computer. Now, the last thing you can do if you know your computer's clean, you know your fans are all functioning properly and you're still having definite thermal throttling problems, then it's likely that you need to upgrade your cooling. It always comes down to cooling. So you could look at something like this, an all-in-one cooler that has a bigger radiator, or you could look at adding more fans, or you could look at swapping out fans that you think are dying, but it's all about cooling, getting the airflow going through that computer, keeping the coolest air possible inside, and making sure that that heat sink is placed properly with that thermal compound, and that should help. A lot of the newer processors are actually very, very high heat producing processors. So they are putting out over 250 watts of heat and you need a cooler that can handle the 250 watts. So in the case of this computer, we have a single 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler which is not performing to the specifications that we would need. It just doesn't have the ability to pull the heat away. And that's why I think this one is thermal throttling. And that's why I've got a 240 millimeter all-in-one cooler that I'm planning to swap into there to limit the amount of thermal throttling that we have. Now, I will be doing that in a separate video. So if you're curious to know the results of that, go ahead and subscribe to this channel because that video is coming out or it has come out already. Also, we have another video coming out very shortly that shows the proper orientation of an all-in-one for best cooling. So you're gonna wanna check that out because that is a huge space where a lot of people have opinions. We're gonna break it down in a way that makes sense and we're gonna explain it with science and physics 
and it will make a whole lot of sense to a lot of you, I hope. So that's also coming up. I hope you stick around for those videos as well. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.